Hi, everyone. Welcome to another video. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I actually made this video two times. This is my third time filming about this particular movie. So I've seen the movie maybe like half a year ago. Um, and recently I had um, a lot of my students from Korea and we have been talking a lot about Korean cinematography because that is something that I love and that we have in common, uh, especially if the student is creative. And a lot of the creative people from creative industries are very familiar with Korean cinematography. And so um, I realized that I haven't talked about anything related to Korean cinematography on my channel. And this will be the first video, probably. I am surprised that I'm not talking about Parasite because Parasite is the movie that blew me away when I saw it first. Um, or actually, when I saw it first, um, when I was recommended this movie, I, I, would, I watched the whole thing. And then towards the end, I was like, I have no idea what I've seen. What is this movie about? I was so shocked and surprised. But then all of the scenes from the movie kind of started making sense. And towards the end, I was crying. And 15 minutes after, I was like, this movie has to win the Oscars. This is the ultimate art piece of the year and probably of the decade um and so when when it won the oscar i was so so happy and um then my students recommended to me some other movies uh like burning um there is actually actually a movie called stalker or stoker uh this is a korean american co-production nicole kidman plays in this movie it's a kind of a a horror mystery thriller but um it's a very very fun movie if you're into asian cinematography and korean so i would recommend that one but today we're going to talk about a movie called past lives the movie has been also recommended to me and it is it was also nominated for the oscars but um i didn't see it for some reason i didn't have time this was like over the summer so i actually didn't I, I knew it was a slower movie. It is not uh, as dynamic as Parasite. So I just didn't have time to watch. And I was not inspired really to watch a, a, a love story uh, because this is a love story. But I was not prepared for this type of love story in this movie. So so sit tight. We're going to talk about the movie um, with spoilers. If you don't want to know what happens in the end, don't watch until the end. I will warn you when to stop watching the video because uh, the ending is really revealing. So it's not, yeah, good to know if you if you want to see it. But um, if you just want to hear the interpretation and maybe think about the topics that are arising from this movie, then I think this video will be helpful for you. I just want to inspire you as well to um, I was actually talking about this with my friend, how we often, um, you know, for the purposes of studying English and also because it, it is more familiar to us, we watch cinematography in English language, but it's such a mistake because there's so many brilliant movies and TV shows recently that I've seen that are in different languages, including Korean and Japanese and Spanish and Portuguese um and um Hebrew and yeah so I encourage you to you know outside of your English studies to also watch things in different languages you will be surprised or not surprised you will be shocked what you were missing so this movie Past Life is directed by Celine Song um it's a female director and I also um that is one of the things that I really really like recently watching um, movies directed by women, Nomadland, the one, the movie that I talked about here, uh, as well as directed by a woman, um, a Chinese American, and um, there's so many new movies nowadays that that um, that are made by the hand of a woman, and in this movie in particular, that is visible because the whole movie is very subtle, very. Um, sensual with a lot of hidden meanings uh, with a lot of like deeper emotions with a lot of shots that are aesthetically pleasing it's it's like a jewel piece so to speak so the whole movie the complete thing um, is is very very precious and special 
So the movie is actually about uh, two, two kids in Korea. Um, we start with them. So a boy and a girl in school and they meet and they become friends. They live in a similar or neighborhoods that are nearby in Seoul. Um, and they are basically just divided by this one street. So every time that she goes home, she goes um, up to her neighborhood and he goes straight to his. And so this visual um, visual shot of them splitting into two um, you know, roads um, that are different is kind of, there are a lot of these hidden shots that are telling us the, what is going to happen after. And so basically her family decides to uh, go to Canada. So they become immigrants and she moves uh, with her family and they um, never see each other again. Um, or or that is what you think. Um, so now uh, fast forward to her uh, living in Toronto. She's moving to New York to study. She became, you know, she was a successful student. Now she became a successful PhD student and she wants to live her dream. And she's very excited about living in New York. But the backstory is that actually they have been in contact for 20 years um, online. So this is this is a movie about distance and relations and, you know, online communication. What does it mean to, you know, can you be friends or can you have a relationship online for so long? Um, this was really, I mean, a lot of us had that experience being in a long distance relationship with someone or a long distance situationship with someone. It's like when you get used to each other and you talk every day almost, and this person is on your screen, but it's not really in your life. And she needs that connection because she really misses Korea. He is the only um, only part that of her life that connects her now to her past. And um, she kind of gets used to having him around. Um, and they are also very good friends. They, you know, they know each other from a very young age. And so I think this connection is very strong and they're not willing to give it up. Whereas for him, um, what we find out is that he has always been, he had emotions for her and he still has. And so, but in Korean culture, that is very subtle. And so, especially for men, it, it is very rare that they will directly express their emotions. And so now she is, she grew up in this very extroverted society. Um, and I think that she forgets a little bit how Korean society works and that even if he has emotions, he's not going to say it, especially because they're so far away. And so they, you know, you follow them um, having these conversations online. And at one point, I think she becomes very, very lonely in this big city. And she says to him that, she would like him to visit. Um, so what are they doing if if they're not going to meet in person? She doesn't want to talk with him anymore. And so they get into a fight and uh, she just shuts down her computer. And in that moment, I think we realize how easy it is to break up with someone essentially or to just erase somebody from your life more than before. Uh, if you have somebody in your vicinity, in your surrounding, you cannot do that that easily. But when you have somebody on your phone or on your computer, you can very easily just, you know, stop communicating. And, um, you know, this movie is developing very slowly. At this point, you are like, what is this movie about? What is going to happen? Like, this is silly. Um, why are we watching a movie about long distance relationship? It, it doesn't make sense. And then we go into his life a little bit. He has a tougher upbringing. He grew up in a family that's a little bit, um, you know, that is poorer than hers. Um, and he needs to prove himself. So he finishes uh, university and now he has to su support his parents. He got a job. He has a very, you know, tough life. And he he cannot just leave everything and, and go and, you know, like like she can so she's in a in a different position at that time and on top of that he goes to military because in korea military is obligatory for men and um he goes in 
to military and that is where when their communication stops uh, for a while and during that time she I think enters like a summer school and she meets a, an American uh, writer who is basically I think in the same program that she wants to study um, at like a master program in theater or something screen, screenwriting or script writing and um, she just sees him as a good opportunity to stay in New York and to have somebody to not be alone you don't know well from these subtle shots you realize that it's not a big love in question it's just a connection between two people and it's very convenient for both of them and so they get married um and so she she is i think 36 or 37 at this point um and she receives an email from her korean friend uh telling her that he's now uh ready to come to new york and visit her and so she at this point she forgot you know a lot of years have gone by i think at this point it's like 25 years and um but, you know, for the old time's sake, and it's her friend, and he wants to experience America for the first time. So he's, she says yes. And um, he is so excited about this trip, because deep down, you know, his intentions are a little bit different. So he never expressed anything. But again, from the shots, you realize how, you know, important this trip is for him. And um, he gets a vacation from off from his work, and he travels to New York. And she tells her husband that her friend from Korea is coming, and he is very familiar with the friend from Korea. So the husband is a little bit on a fence with this. So he doesn't know what to say um, because he's not jealous per se, but he knows that these two have a special connection. And so he's maybe afraid that something is going to happen. Whereas her face and her facial expressions from her, you cannot tell anything um you know it's now past middle of the film we are getting into like minute 45 or like up to an hour and we we still don't know what's her deal what is she feeling and so that is why the film is so brilliant because the emotions are very hidden and you have to kind of discover it with uh subtle clues each other for the first time and you know it's this feeling that so many of us had like when you see somebody after so long and you feel like no time has passed, you have this special connection with this person, but you don't know what it is. Uh, it's maybe like a soulmate connection, some would say, but in this movie, I think it's a cultural connection because they are from the same culture and now they see each other in a completely different culture, but they recognize each other as, you know, very close and very, um, very familiar to each other and so there are so many beautiful shots of them you know sightseeing around New York everything is very subtle there is beautiful music in the background and you kind of realize that these two might be good for each other these two this may be it for her because she's living this life and you don't really know if she's happy um, but with this Korean friend um she could be so there's a lot of possibilities that all you know you're it's like a trio and you're always questioning like who thinks what of whom and who is you know who's good for each other is is what is she feeling what is he feeling what is the husband feeling so you're trying to you know it's almost like a mind game you're trying to discover what are their feelings and um, there is a scene where they're having dinner together. And um, in, during this dinner, uh, basically the husband is uh, third wheeling. So he is holding the candle for these two. And they, are, they have so much to talk about. He talks about Korea and she's fascinated because she you know, lost connection with her homeland. And she wants to learn so much. But um, again, nobody is saying anything. Nobody's touching anyone. This is a movie that has, you know, physical connection that is lacking physical connection. You know, you won't see any of that in the movie. And, um, you know, you can see a little bit that the husband is upset, uh, but he's he's very polite, so he's not showing it. 
and then they go to their house and she says that she will um walk him to the station or they will call the uber so he needs to fly tomorrow back to korea because he decided to go back his his vacation was only for a couple of days and um they are standing outside and this is a point where you should stop if you want to watch the movie so they're standing outside um of her house and they're walking a little bit around the neighborhood and they're very silent so that nobody's saying anything um and then the uber comes and he's looking at her and like are we gonna say goodbye like what's gonna happen and she's like oh your uber is here so she still is not realizing what is going on so you know potentially he will go and they will never see each other again and she does not know what to say i think for me personally when i was analyzing this moment i think she was very confused um but i felt also that his feelings were stronger and when he entered the car he said something like um you know, there is this, um, I think, Korean um, story, or it's like a myth, a fairy tale, where um, if they say, if you are friends with somebody in, in this life, that means that you were connected in so many past lives. If you meet somebody um, in this life, that means that you were um, also connected in past lives but not as much but if you fall in love in this lifetime that means that you were together in like thousand past lives so the connection is the strongest and he said something like oh I guess we were something to each other in past lives um, and she still doesn't say anything so at this point I was like you know it's it, it became a tragic love story very quickly um and still i i at this point this is like an hour and 20 minutes have gone by and we have no conclusion i was you know really surprised like why 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 is the movie not giving any point um but when he drives away in the uber she starts going around and circling the neighborhood and the faster she's walking she starts crying faster and faster and faster and in this moment at the end of the movie when she's crying um you can feel this release um that you can feel basically all the emotion that she has been feeling throughout the whole movie are now finally out and and the husband comes out and he's looking for her and she is still crying and um, the husband, you know, uh, hugs her and, you know, says everything is going to be OK. And they, you know, go into the, the apartment and that's the end of the movie. You can hear beautiful music in the end. Um, beautiful theme, theme song that really is related to the movie <laughs> and the the ending, especially. And so. In that moment when the credits are going, you're you're thinking so much. If you had experiences like that, you are remembering all of your past experiences. Where did I do what did I do wrong? Should I have done this or that? Like what was the meaning of it? And so the the movie opens up so many topics about contemporary dating and online dating long distance relationship even online work online friendships like everything that has to do with like modern communication you feel it's related to this story uh, especially being an immigrant living in different countries having no country of your own feeling lonely feeling isolated feeling like you don't belong to your home country but you also don't belong to, to this new country where you're living it's a very interesting lesson and show of how these contemporary relationships work, work and who is actually happy there um, because nobody, I don't think any of these three characters is ultimately happy, but you know, they're leading these modern lives and everybody is fulfilling their, you know, um, career dreams, but ultimately the connection that has been made um, in, in the early, you know, this relationship that could have been perfect meaning they could have been together you know as kids and then later as teenagers and maybe had family together and you know be together forever 
is definitely not possible anymore. Maybe in the next video I'll be talking about Parasite. We'll see. I'm currently, like I said, having a lot of Korean students. My girls from Korea, I love them so much. We talk about makeup and skincare and, um, you know, just everything and anything. We're talking about like um, student movements in, in California in 68 and beat poetry and so many different things. But, you know, aside from that, we're also talking about Korean cinematography. So, um, like I said, probably in the next video, I will be talking or explaining Parasite in depth the way, the way I understood it. And so, again, these videos can be useful for you because, like I said, everything is a story, even if you're talking about yourself and um, if you're trying to explain um, any topic, um, storytelling is useful because it will teach you how to say it and how to keep, you know, other people's attention, how to complete your story, because if the story doesn't have the beginning or the end, or if you miss something from the middle part, it is not going to be complete. So um, think about how you would, you know, talk about your favorite movie, let's say. Um, how would you say that in English to somebody? And making sure that that person understand what you're talking about. Always think about, am I giving enough information? So maybe in this presentation, I'm saying too much. You don't have maybe 20 minutes to talk about something, but still... Um, all the key elements should be there. And yeah, so thank you. I hope you enjoyed Watch Past Lives. And um, yes, we will see each other soon in the next video. Keep on studying English and enjoy the fall. Bye.